what happened in the skies on the morning of September 11th, 2001. Why did America's air defense seem to be ineffective? Boss just gave us a heads up and said that he was heading towards Washington. Now, where are you getting this information from on America 11? Okay. You know what, get rid of this goddamn sim. Turn your switch. Hey, turn the sim switches off. Get rid of that crap. According to the 9 11 Commission report, four aircraft departed America's airports on a gorgeous September morning in the Northeast Corridor of the United States. Two from Boston Logan, one from Newark, New Jersey, and another from Washington, Dulles in Virginia. The aircraft alleged to have attacked the World Trade Center are reported to have departed Boston's Logan International Airport. The first aircraft claimed to be American 11, tail number N334AA, is reported to have departed Logan at approximately 0800 a.m. United 175, tail number N612UA, a few minutes thereafter. Both climbing out to their cruising altitude, it is alleged the aircraft were hijacked by Muslim extremists armed with box cutters. Located at Hill Air Force Base in Utah, the 84th Radar Evaluation Squadron, also known as RADES, provided software and files through the Freedom of Information Act of the reported radar tracks on the morning of September 11, 2001. We will be analyzing these files throughout this presentation. NORAD provided audio recordings from the morning of September 11, 2001 of their Northeast Defense Command, also known as NEEDS, the sector responsible for defending the Northeastern United States. The FAA also made available their audio recordings from Boston and Washington. Please keep in mind when viewing this presentation that pilots for 9-11 Truth do not claim data provided by government sources is authentic, yet it must be analyzed. Pilots for 9-11 Truth have analyzed a growing mountain of information and data provided by government agencies, much of which conflicts with the government narrative of events. How can government agencies draw a conclusion when even their own data does not support their hypothesis? Government sources and the 9-11 Commission must be held accountable for such conflicts, yet they refuse to comment. Even if data were altered by their very sources, it is a crime to fabricate data provided through the Freedom of Information Act, and someone must be held accountable. These are the radar tracks of the various aircraft and their relative positions on the morning of 9-11 during a little over the two-hour period from 8 a.m. till approximately 10.15, according to the 84th Radar Evaluation Squadron. Included is the fighter response, Irreverent air traffic and clutter have been filtered for clarity. According to the tapes, at approximately 0815, American 11 was given a turn 20 degrees to the right to avoid American traffic. Turn 20 degrees, right? The crew read back the instructions and made the turn. Right, American 11. Roughly 15 seconds later, American 11 was given an instruction by ATC to climb and maintain 35,000 feet. American 11, no climbing table level 350. There was no reply. Boston Center made continued attempts to contact American 11 without success. American 11, climbing table level 350. American 11, Boston. United 175 checks in on the frequency after departing Boston Logan. The next time American 11 is heard from was the widely publicized infamous call from Mohammed Atta, supposedly at the controls, in which he is alleged to mistakenly have transmitted over the air a demand meant for the cabin. Is that American 11 trying to call? Buddy, we have some planes. Just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We're turning to the airport. 
This roughly 10 minutes after the last call from the crew. And uh, who's trying to call me here? It is important to keep in mind, this transmission could have been broadcast from anywhere. Those who make excuses for the government story claim this transmission was from American 11. Because that's what the government told them. American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you'll danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Roughly 25 minutes after departure, 0825, the alleged American 11 changes course according to the Radies radar. The target turns south and heads for New York City. United 175 then gets handed off to the next sector. United 175, contact the uh, Boston Center on 133.42. Uh, 133.42, three, 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 United 175, go on. In this sector, UA-175 gets a visual on an aircraft described as American 11. United 175, Boston. 175, go ahead, sir. Roger, you have traffic. Look at your road, 12 to 1 o'clock at about uh, uh, 10 miles southbound. See if you can see an American 767 out there, please. They were looking negative contact, guys, 175. You see a 583, can you see it? 583, we still don't have him yet, sir. We're looking. Okay, United 175, you have him at your 12 o'clock now, 5, 10 miles. Uh, affirmative, we have him. Uh, he looks about 20, uh, yeah, about 29, 28,000. Okay, thank you. UA-175 is given a vector to pass behind that aircraft and then to head direct to its next fix, which is Sparta VOR. United 175, clear direct Sparta. UA-175 is then handed off to New York Center at roughly five minutes before the alleged American Airlines 11 impacts the North Tower. United-175, Connor, New York Center, 127.17. 127.17, United-175. At approximately 0830, the first call was made by the Boston Traffic Management Unit, also known as Boston TMU, to notify the command center of the hijack of American 11. Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, good morning. Uh, Boston Center. I got a situation here with American 1 1, American 11. Boston departure to uh, uh, LAX. We believe it's a uh, possible hijack situation. Okay. Tell me more. Okay. Uh, he departed Boston. Uh, we lost radio communications with him. Then we lost uh, his transponder. And they believe that they heard in the background, something, a threat. And right now... What, a threat, you said? A threat. And right now the uh, aircraft is just west of Albany going southbound. Okay, I see him. And he's... Uh, Nobody's talking to him, right? Nobody's talking to him at this time, correct. Okay, anything I can do to help you right now? And no, I mean, uh, just in the right, we have no idea where this aircraft is going, maybe a hit up, hit up the New York Center. The command center recommends to notify all surrounding centers, especially New York and Cleveland. Hey, uh, well, probably as a precaution, might be good if we uh, call up Cleveland and New York and at least let them know, just in case this guy starts heading there, where they'll have a heads right. up on it. Okay, let's do that. Cleveland. Hi, Cleveland, New York, Boston. Uh, I got a little situation with American 1-1, American 11. He is a uh, 767 departed Boston going to LAX. Uh, we don't know where the aircraft is going. He uh, is uh, supposedly going to LAX. Uh, was going westbound. We lost its uh, frequency. Then we lost its transponder, and now the aircraft is uh, just west of Albany heading due south. We have, do we have the, uh, the data block on it? Who's got the yeah, we, we have, it's a primary target presently, and, and it's just hitting uh, southwest mountain. Okay. Um, no opportunity encoded right now. I'll, I'll advise the area. The last altitude observed was uh, flight level 290. 29. Heading uh, southbound? Heading southwest mountain. He's going southbound. Like 20, 20 miles southbound. Okay. Uh, Boston Center, United 175, Boston. 
Right, uh, right around there. He's uh, southwest of Albany by one five miles. You have no idea where he's going? No idea, sir. All right. You can tag him on the uh, TSD. I, I do okay. did pick him up. Primary only? Primary only. Okay. Okay. Thank you. At approximately 0835, a call to scramble fighters is made by Boston Center directly to Cape Approach, trying to get in touch with Otis Air Force Base. Cape Drake on uh, Cape on a four, uh, team unit 41. Cape Drake on. Yeah, hi. Uh, are you uh, able to, are we able to talk to Otis on this line? Um, I'm not sure, but if I need, if you need to get in touch with them, I can, uh, I, I, think the seven, I think they're on the seven line. I have a little situation with the, uh, American 11. What? I have a situation with American 11. Okay. Do you want to talk to Otis Power? I want to talk to uh, Otis Street. I need to scramble some uh, fighters. All right, well, hold on a second. Let me get you the soup. Hey, Jimmy, pick up uh, the 41. Uh, something about a scramble, I don't know. Cape Approach. Hey, Cape. Uh, Dan Buena calling from Washington. Yes. Are you having a situation with American 11, the possible hijack? American 11? Yes, sir. The private Boston going to LAX. Right now, he's south of Albany. He'd like to scramble some fighters to go tail him. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk to Otis here. Okay, and uh, just put a, uh, if he wants, just depart, and uh, we'll put a flight plan in for him. At 0840, five minutes later, Boston calls the command center to speak with New York TRACON Direct, letting them know the hijack is confirmed. Command center is Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, command center here. I mean, uh, Boston center here. Could I get New York TRACON? You bet. Oh, nothing with the... Uh, yes, with American 11. Say it again? Oh, a reference to American 11. Right, have you had any contact with him yet? Uh, no, no contact. Uh, it is confirmed uh, hijacked, though. Okay. Hey, Tracon, hi, Boston Center. Uh, good morning, American 11. Uh, 767, possible hijack. Okay, American 11, 75, seven, uh, and... Uh, 76. Where's he landing? Uh, right now, we don't have any idea, but uh, he was to the northwest of Albany, and now he's uh, down by Sparta, losing speed very rapidly. We believe he's a primary only, and uh, we believe he's on the descent. That's why he's, uh, he's, he's slowing down. I'm just trying to, uh, and he's around the Sparta area now, you say? Yeah, he's around the Sparta area right now. Wow, I just don't see anything. Yeah, it's a primary target right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking pretty hard for any kind of primary target. It, we sh still should be able to see it. I don't see... Uh, now, I, I do have something on the TSD if that gives you an idea of which, uh, which way he's heading. Yeah, well, I'm just looking at the real raw radar here, and I just don't see... Uh, I just don't see anything out there. Uh, I'll start. I'll let the area know to start looking for it. We just don't it? have any idea. What else, last house we had uh, was fellow 290, but... Uh, his uh, speed has diminished to quite a bit. Okay. So we believe he might be a descent. Okay. All righty. Well, okay. Uh, I'll pass along to the sector. All right. Just be careful. I understand. Check. Check. In Boston? Yes. You said you confirmed the hijack. How do you... Uh, well, the, uh, what uh, has happened, the uh, pilot has uh, kept the uh, mic heed while the uh, person's in the, uh, in the cockpit, the flight deck. Okay. And what are you hearing? Uh, the threat, you know, the, I, I don't really know what the, they're here, but that the, the suit came down and uh, confirmed the, uh, that is the hijack. Okay, if you learn anything else, please give us a call so we can help you out as best we can. Does New York know what uh, this guy has? New York to, uh, knows, uh, Cleveland knows, uh, maybe Washington will be next. We're going to scramble some fighters to tail them. Okay, coming out of Otis? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of the coordination with uh, Washington uh, Center. I will uh, advise them of what's going on. Thank you. According to the command center, Washington was also being advised at this time to keep an eye out for suspicious aircraft. This was an hour prior to the attack on the Pentagon. At 0845, one minute prior to the North Tower impact, Cape calls Boston and advises them they would need to get authorization from the Northeast Defense Sector, also known as NEEDS, to launch fighters. 
cape gives Boston the flight ID of the fighters as Panta 45 and 46. Favor, Samuel. Here. Yeah, it's Cape Train Con right. here. Is Dan there? That's me. Hey, uh, we just I just talked to Otis here, and they said they needed a NIAS authorization. We're uh, working with NIAS to see if uh, that should be calling you. Now. Okay, Over just there. to let you know, we okay, we got a call on a Panta, P-A-N-T-A, -A, uh -huh. off on November 10, go off a of four five. Yeah. And four six, flight of two. They'll be airborne soon. Great, thank you. All right, TJ. It is interesting to note that American 11 and United 175 both have the same departure and destination, Boston to LAX, but were given different routing. American 11 was cleared along the preferred Great Circle route to LAX, which directs flights over Syracuse, New York. This is the most direct route to Los Angeles International Airport. United 175 was given a more southern route, used mainly by departures out of Newark. Due to the cleared southern route of the alleged UA-175, the aircraft was closer to the World Trade Center after the first tower strike. Had this aircraft been given the preferred route to LAX, it would have taken more time to reach its target and perhaps given enough time for fighters to intercept the aircraft before reaching its target. Also due to this change of route, United 175 crossed American 11 within miles of each other. At this time, UA-93 departed EWR. UA-93 and UA-175 used the same exact path also within miles of each other. This brings to mind Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was a mission developed by Joint Chiefs of Staff Lemnitzer. The operation dictated swapping commercial aircraft once airborne for drones and shooting them out of the sky. This action was to be blamed on Cuba in order to justify an invasion, a classic false flag mission. Stage an attack and blame it on your enemy to gain public and most importantly, congressional support for war. There are many tracks which seemingly go out of their way to converge with the alleged 9-11 targets and then split off. Was a swap occurring at these points? A sort of revised and updated form of Operation Northwoods. Of course, a simple explanation will be offered by government agencies and those who make excuses. But the coincidences cannot be ignored. At 8.52 a.m., fighters are launched from Otis Air Force Base. Meads repeatedly wants the fighters to go direct to the Z-Point, to New York City, and demand the FAA ATC clear a route. I don't know where I'm scrambling these guys to. I need a direction, a uh, destination. Okay, I'm going to give you the Z-Point. It's just north of uh, New York City. I got this lat long 4115, 7436, or 7346. Head them in that direction. Copy that. Then a report comes in that the hijacked aircraft just struck the World Trade Center. Can I just to help you? Yeah, it's First Air Force Special Tibbets. We just confirmed from down here that that was one of the same, the hijack and the... Uh, in the building. First Air Force confirmation, uh, one in the same American Airlines and uh, into the World Trade Center. Copy? Is that what you said, sir? That's copy, yes. Another report is circulated through the system that the last known position was 15 miles east of JFK. Last position I got from Boston was 15 no, miles east of JFK. Instead of the fighters being scrambled directly to New York City, Needs changes their route to hold in W-105, a warning area off the southern coast of Long Island based on the last known position that was never verified. 
Here they are instructed to hold as a radar track accelerates to more than 150 knots over the max operating speed of a 767 with its target in sight, the World Trade Center South Tower. We analyze the speeds for the South Tower aircraft thoroughly in our presentation 9-11 World Trade Center attack. We have found based on precedent, data, and aerodynamics that a standard 767 would be impossible to control at such excessive speeds over its max operating. Was this aircraft modified so it could beat Otis fighters to its target, the South Tower of the World Trade Center? If it was, the modifications would have to be instructed by individuals who know our air defense response time. Just like there has never been a steel skyscraper to collapse from fire prior to 9-11, there has never been an aircraft positively identified to exceed its max operating speed by more than 150 knots. Its maneuvering speed by 220 knots, pulled G's, was controllable and survived before 9-11 or after. After the second impact, Otis fighters were instructed to set up combat air patrol over New York City. Tankers were called in for fueling operations and remained loitering. Almost 35 minutes after American 11 went silent, also known as Nordo, and changed course, American 77 was lost to Indianapolis Center. Uh, Indianapolis Center was working this guy. What guy? American 77. Okay. At flight level 350. However, yeah. they lost radar with him. They lost contact with him. They lost everything. And they don't have any idea where he is or what happened. So what we've done at the round surrounding centers here is to tell everyone to look out for limited codes, primary targets, or whatever the case may be. Okay. Indianapolis contacted American Airlines three times to notify them of another missing aircraft. At 9.08 a.m., Langley was also notified and ordered to battle stations, an order in which pilots are sitting in their cockpits, ready for flight. Yet Langley fighters didn't get airborne till almost 20 minutes later. Tell Foxy to scramble Langley, send them in the same location. Battle, battle, battle stations are scramble. Battle stations only, Langley and were given instruction to head out over the Atlantic instead of directly to protect Washington. Say again where you want them? Uh, we want them in the Whiskey 386 area. All right. Yeah, so that's 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 from, uh... As soon as the Pentagon was attacked, Langley fighters turned towards Washington. There are many other bases closer to Washington and New York City that offer defense. Otis and Langley were selected due to the fact many fighters from other bases were out on training exercises. Several training exercises were in effect on the morning of 9-11. I hope they cancel the exercise because this is ridiculous. You guys watching the news? Yeah, they got it on in the battle cab right oh, now. They? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure. I've been watching it for about 10 minutes. And I said, I wonder if they're, they suspend the exercise or uh, not? at this time, no. Okay. I've never seen so much real-world stuff happen during an exercise. Andrews Air Force Base is within 10 miles of Washington, D.C. The fighters were sent to North Carolina. Atlantic City F-16s are much closer to New York City than Otis Air Force Base F-15s. Atlantic City fighters were training out over the Atlantic. In fact, Otis also had fighters out on training missions, yet two fighters on alert. Needs was also in training mode when the attacks occurred. Needs had simulated tracks on their radar screens and didn't remove them till almost 9.30 a.m., well after the second tower impact. According to Captain Jeff Lottis, a former F-15 fighter pilot with two tours of duty in Iraq, false inputs on radar screens is unprecedented, except on 9-11. You can hear the confusion when Needs is attempting to locate their tankers. Call sign Team 23. Uh, no, Team 21 and 107. Thank you, David. Uh, this is... This is Team 23. That's Team 23. Yeah, I just told Jeremy, I want him down in 386 and we've got a horse check. You know what? Get rid of this goddamn sim. Turn your switch. Hey, turn the sim switches off. Just get rid of that crap. Our defenses just seemed behind the eight ball every step of the way. Was this all by design? 
How would the hijackers know to strike on such a chaotic day with the U.S. under minimal defense? It seems the hijackers were extremely lucky all morning on 9-11. That is, if what we've been told by the 9-11 Commission is true. Yet, even the 9-11 Commission admits they haven't been told the truth. The Pentagon, our nation's military headquarters. How could an aircraft get so close to the Pentagon after America has been attacked almost an hour prior? The Pentagon in Washington, D.C. is well defended, according to former Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger. The uh, city is ringed with uh, Air Force uh, bases and Navy bases, and uh, the uh, ability to get the defensive planes in the air is, is very, very high, and at the same time you, you would do what, what is being done, and that is closing off the entire airspace so that you, in, in effect, the whole Washington area is a no-fly zone, so that any planes that are, can't identify themselves and get into that uh, are uh, to be shot down. Does the Pentagon also have anti-aircraft defense? Certainly the general public would not know of such installations, as our enemies would obtain the same information. If the Pentagon did have such a defense, it would certainly be classified. April Gallup is a survivor of the Pentagon attack. She crawled through the hole in the Pentagon holding her son. April says that she did not see any evidence of an aircraft crash and didn't even know an airplane was reported to have caused the damage till she got to the hospital. April is extremely puzzled by the fact that there were no warnings or defense of the Pentagon attack especially when everyone in the world knew America was being attacked after the World Trade Center strikes. When discussing airspace surrounding our nation's capital, often the restricted airspace referred to is the prohibited areas around the Capitol building and the White House. We have to look further out. This is known as Class Bravo airspace. It is a highly controlled airspace in which you need a clearance to enter including two-way radio communication and a working mode C transponder that reports your altitude. New York and Washington, D.C. both have Class Bravo airspace surrounding their hub airports. New York covers JFK, Newark, and LaGuardia, while Washington covers Baltimore, Reagan National in the middle, and west to Dulles. American 77 was lost from radar when its transponder was shut off at 8.56 a.m. This is 10 minutes after the first tower strike and 16 minutes after Washington was notified to keep an eye out for suspicious aircraft. Danielle O'Brien at Washington Tracon observed a fast-moving target penetrating Washington Class Bravo. She wasn't notified of the events in New York, yet Washington Center was advised. Why was this information seemingly intercepted from getting to Tracon controllers in Washington? Had Miss O'Brien and her colleagues been advised of the events in New York, would she have been more alert to have the target penetrating Washington Class Bravo intercepted? Would the word have gone out to the Langley fighters, who were now heading out over the Atlantic? If the unidentified target reached Washington, D.C., certainly Pentagon aircraft defense could have played a role, if April Gallup is correct. Some have argued that the Pentagon would not have such a defense because Reagan National is so close, an aircraft departing and arriving could inadvertently be shot down. Those who make such arguments aren't familiar with how the national airspace system works. Most aircraft arriving into Reagan National are well known of their intentions prior to even departing their origin airport. Those that aren't are well known of their intentions prior to entering Washington Class Bravo, 30 miles from Reagan National. Those who don't communicate and perhaps have their transponders off, that is your target. Aside from the fact we already know it's impossible for an aircraft to have caused the physical damage at the Pentagon based on witnesses filmed on location and data provided by government agencies, an unidentified aircraft should not have been anywhere close to the Pentagon. It appears the interceptors were intercepted. Always one step behind the curve until the objectives were accomplished.
The confusion caused throughout the system on 9-11 seems to be the contributing factor of why the perpetrators were so successful in carrying out their missions. When an unidentified target was approaching Washington, D.C. from the west, a message was sent out in the system that American 11 was still airborne. Scoggins Military Boston Center just had a report that American 11 is still in the air and it's on its way towards heading towards Washington. Okay, American 11 is still in the air on its way towards Washington? It was definitely another aircraft that hit the tower. That's the latest report we have. Okay. I'm going to try to confirm an ID for you, but I would assume he's somewhere over uh, either New Jersey or somewhere further south. Okay, so American 11 isn't a hijack at all then, right? No, he is a hijack. He, American 11 is a hijack? Yes. Yeah. And he's going into Washington? It could be a third aircraft. It could be a third aircraft going on to Washington. Do you have a Mode 3 on him, sir? With no Mode 3, we're trying to get a, a radio to me if I can. This is a report I had from Washington Center. You might want to get someone on another phone talking to Washington Center, see if they have him tracked up. Copy that. And then get maybe DC Guard or somebody up there on, that, on the aircraft. Okay, do you have a wet one right now on it? Uh, I will try to get one. Okay, copy. Thanks. All eyes then focused on a target coming from the northeast and not the west. Also, this message was sent out that the aircraft was headed towards Washington before it would have even gotten to Philly. Why was the rumor started that an aircraft from the northeast is inbound to Washington and not Philly? Was it to lead interceptors toward a phantom target and away from the real threat inbound from the west? The ultimate source for this confusion is still unknown. Hi, this is Huntress ID. Um, Huntress, yeah, go ahead. Um, yes, sir. We have um, fighters on battle stations and airborne also. Um, we're trying to figure out the wet long for the American 11. Bosses gave us a heads up and said that he was heading towards Washington. Now, w where are you getting this information from on American 11? Boston Military. Who? Boston Military. Boston? Yes. Military death. And they said that they were getting it from, they were getting updates through Washington. So not Washington Center, I'm sure, because American 11 is the airplane that we're under the premise that has already crashed into the Trade Center. Right. Again, someone intercepted the interceptors by providing false information. Washington Tracon was isolated due to the fact that they weren't advised of the events in New York. The rest of the system was virtually isolated from Washington Tracon because Tracon didn't feel the unidentified target may be a threat until it was too late. Again, due to the fact the information seemed to have been intercepted from getting to Washington Tracon. I have uh, any information you may need on this flight. Okay, if you could do me a favor and have them call us, we cannot call out for some reason. By this time, many are aware of the infamous Norman Mineta testimony given to the 9-11 Commission. The aircraft was 50 miles out, 30 miles out, 10 miles out. Do the orders still stand? The plane is 10 miles out. The young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Well, at the time, I didn't know what all that meant. And, um, the flight you're referring to is the, the one. flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah. To this day, there has been much controversy over what exactly those orders were. Were they to stand down in order to let the Pentagon attack occur? Were they a shoot-down order? Mineta's testimony has been among the most damaging because those who make excuses for the government story are having a very difficult time trying to explain such a conversation with the vice president. Some young man came in and said to the vice president, there's a plane uh, 50 miles out uh, coming towards DC. So I said to Monty uh, Belger, who's the number two at FAA, I said, Monty, what do you have on radar and on this plane coming in? He said, well, the transponder's been turned off, so we don't know who it is, uh, and we don't know the altitude or speed. And um, so uh, I said, well, where is it? He said, well, it's somewhere beyond uh, Great Falls right now. And so uh, then uh, the young man came in and said, it's 20 miles away. And uh, so we're in, I'd say, well, Monty, where is this plane in relationship to the ground? And on uh, radar, it's hard to associate with a ground point, but they'd be able to tell you roughly the distance from wherever you are. 
uh, and, but he couldn't tell you speed or altitude. And then all of a sudden, as I was talking to him, he said, uh, oh, I lost the uh, bogey, lost the target. I said, well, where is it? He said, well, somewhere between um, Roslyn and uh, National Airport. And about that time, someone broke into the conversation. He said, Mr. Secretary, we just had a confirmation from an Arlington County police officer saying that he saw a, an American Airlines plane go into the Pentagon. Some have argued that the aircraft which was being discussed was United Airlines 93 coming down from Pennsylvania and that Minetta had his timeline inaccurate. This can't be the case, as United 93 never got close to the Pentagon. Some have argued it was American Airlines 11, but same thing. American Airlines 11 never got close to the Pentagon. Even in what is called coast track mode, when a radar track of an aircraft continues on its present course based on the last data received, the aircraft still would not have been close to the Pentagon. The aircraft target being discussed by Vice President Cheney and overheard by Mineta could only be the target inbound from the west which penetrated Washington class Bravo airspace. Combine that with the fact that the Langley fighters were headed out over the Atlantic during this time and turned inbound only after the target drops off radar near the Pentagon? It seems pretty obvious what the orders were. An airborne command center, a military version of a 747, was airborne when the unidentified target approached from the west. According to Rady's data, this aircraft did a dozy doe with the unidentified target as the F-16s were headed out over the Atlantic. Again, at the moment the target disappears at the Pentagon, the F-16s are then turned towards Washington. Operation Northwoods proposed swapping aircraft for drones and using them in a false flag attack to blame on Cuba. There is evidence of the original aircraft still airborne after their supposed crash. Unlike the false rumors floated through the system in an apparent attempt to intercept the interceptors, there is data which does show UA-93 still airborne after its alleged crash as well as N612 UA, the aircraft which supposedly hit the South Tower. ATC transcripts show UA-93 still airborne at a location just south of the impact crater. ACARS data, a device used for communicating with aircraft, show UA-175 still airborne in western Pennsylvania almost 20 minutes after its reported crash. This ACARS data reports the closest station transmitting to and from an aircraft. The official flight path of the alleged UA-175 shows that if the aircraft were to receive an ACARS message, it should have come from these transmitting locations. This is the map of the ACARS facility surrounding the New York City area. However, ACARS stations were reported to have transmitted from Harrisburg and Pittsburgh, PA, after the alleged impact at the South Tower. According to radar specialist and electrical engineer Dennis Semino, this is impossible if N612UA crashed into the World Trade Center. Simulated radar tracks, routing clearances other than preferred, enabling the second aircraft threat to be closer to the World Trade Center after the first impact. Aircraft exceeding their max operating limits by more than 130 to 150 knots. Inaccurate aircraft position reports. False aircraft target reports. Aircraft converging, flying virtually in formation with and then diverging from reported 9-11 aircraft. Fighters launched in the wrong directions, 
aircraft seemingly still airborne after the alleged attacks. Poor communications. Phones not working. We cannot call out for some reason. All right, let me have your number. Is it any surprise that our defenses were always one step behind? While the perpetrators of 9-11 were able to successfully accomplish their mission with military precision, are we supposed to believe Al-Qaeda was running all this interference so the supposed hijackers could complete their mission? Bin Laden isn't even listed as a suspect for 9-11, yet we went into Afghanistan to smoke him out. These are real questions. The cold hard facts added to the growing mountain of information and data which does not add up to what we have been told by our government. Write your Congress representatives, your senators, demand a full and thorough investigation before we write more law giving up our freedoms in the name of security. They who give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Benjamin Franklin February 17th, 1775. Thank you for taking the time to inform yourself. Play music now. Yeah. 